Hey everyone, we got, what, five big stories for you today? Time stamps down below. Yeah, we're back to sitting at the desk uh, for right now. I know sometimes the TV not being fully in frame bothers you guys. You know what? Too bad. That's the way it goes today. And Skurvo, my buddy, do you have some news for these people today? Huh? Huh? Some news, Skurvo? Meet my buddy Skurvo. Isn't he nice? I like his pirate hat. Um, yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah, I guess we can do that. Uh, we'll give away $100 uh, to new subscribers this month. Uh, all you gotta do is be subscribed to the channel and a random new subscriber will be picked at the end of the month to win $100. We also have uh, three copies of, what is it, Pokemon Legends Arceus that comes out later this month. We're giving away uh, three copies of that as well. There's a viral sweep link down in the description or the pinned comment. Let's get into our first story. Uh, and this deals with something we probably should have noticed with the ESRB rating of Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Now, to be fair, when the ESRB rating originally came out for Kirby and the Forgotten Land last year. It didn't have the full description ready to go, but the full description is out there now, and it's been noticed there is something in that ESRB rating description that is brand new to the Kirby franchise. So it says players use swords, bombs, and blaster type pistols to defeat enemies. Some weapons allow players to use targeting and crosshairs for ranged firing. Now, Kirby has never used a pistol or gun of any type in any uh, game besides Smash Bros, where obviously everybody can. There's items, obviously Kirby has some copy abilities in Smash Bros as well that uses weapons like Bayonetta and stuff. But the thing is, we've never actually seen Kirby use this in the main line of games. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this works and obviously how the crosshair mechanic works. It says for long range shooting, is there gonna be sniping in this game? Are we talking, uh, I don't know, like it's a full 3D Kirby game. So they're gonna be playing around with new ideas and and apparently this is one of the new ideas going to be entering the Kirby universe. Mario holds a gun in Mario plus Rabbids um, Kingdom Battle. So I guess anything's possible to hold guns from Nintendo at this point. What's next? Link? So yeah, I think uh, this is just a really, really interesting story. Uh, you guys let me know how you think this gun mechanic is going to work and uh, in what ways in Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Next up, uh, Phil Spencer wants all console makers to work together on cross network bans. Now Phil Spencer's been on record of always wanting all console manufacturers to work together. He wishes that he could put Game Pass on everything as an example, uh, but he said something I would love us to be able to do, and this is a hard one as an industry, is when somebody gets banned in one of our networks, is there a way for us to ban them across other networks? I would like to be able to bring my banned user list to other networks where I play. So this is the group of people that I choose not to play with because I don't want to recreate that in every platform that I play video games on. So let's say you're playing Call of Duty on, um, I don't know, PlayStation 5 and there's a really annoying user and you ban them and that user also happens to play on Xbox you go over to Xbox and they play Madden and they're just as obnoxious there uh, maybe it's a different username maybe it's the same email I'm not really sure how this would work and I don't want to never say never because at one point cross-platform play was one of those things we said would never happen uh, and it has at one point we said Microsoft would never bring their games to any platform but PC and now we see some of their games at least appearing on switch uh, so I don't want to ever say that this will never happen, but I do like the idea. I'm not really sure how it could be implemented, how it would even work in a fair way, but I will say that this does at least make some semblance of sense to me. I think this is one of those wish list items that's kind of like, you know what? I wish the gaming industry worked this way. It doesn't, I don't foresee how it can, but uh, there's nothing wrong with having dreams and Phil Spencer has quite a few of them. This next story is actually an update on something that happened in 2017 and it was updated because an appeal uh, has now been fully processed. Uh, basically two LAPD officers lost their jobs for playing Pokemon Go instead of responding to a call about a robbery. Now this actually happened back in 2017 in the summer, as I said, uh, but, it was under appeal. They were fired and they've been under appeal trying to get their jobs back, trying to argue um, a lot of different uh, angles on this. So we're going to read uh, Nintendo Life's little summary of this along with some quotes and I'll go into some additional details. So court documents have revealed details of a story of two LAPD officers who were fired from the force back in 2017 for playing Pokemon Go on duty, whilst ignoring calls for backup at a nearby robbery in progress. As reported by Vice, Officers Louis Lozano and Eric Mitchell, who have just had their appeal for reinstatement denied by a California judge, were in the vicinity of an ongoing robbery at a Macy's in Crenshaw when they received urgent calls from colleagues to provide support. 
Instead, the pair relocated from the area of the crime in order to hunt down a Snorlax, as well as a rarer Togat. In Niantic's smash hit mobile game, when originally questioned about their failure to respond to their radio, the officers insisted they had been in a loud area and failed to hear the calls for assistance. However, upon further investigation of their dash cam, it turned out the pair had, in fact, blatantly ignored their in-car comms in favor of excitedly hunting down Pokemon, even moving their squad car to several different locations in order to track them down. Court documents filed on the incident illustrated with quotes just how involved the two police officers were in the Pokemon hunt. After Mitchell apparently caught the Snorlax exclaiming, got him, petitioners agreed to go get the Togetic and drive off. When their car stopped again, the DICVS recorded Mitchell saying, don't run away, don't run away, while Lozano described how he buried it and ultra balled the Togetic before announcing, got him. Mitchell advised he was still trying to catch it, adding, holy crap, man, this thing is fighting the crap out of me. Eventually, Mitchell exclaimed, holy crap, finally, apparently in reference to capturing Togat. As he remarked, the guys are going to be so jealous. Petitioners then agreed to return the seven to a 7-Eleven where Sergeant Gomez later met them to end their watch. On the way, Mitchell remarked, I got you a new Pokemon today, dude. So in wake of the incident, officers Lozano and Mitchell attempted to have themselves reinstated, arguing that their vehicle's in-car recording devices weren't meant to be used to record private conversations, an appeal that was denied by the local judge. The pair may not have caught any criminals that day after blatantly ignoring calls to help colleagues, but they can at least take solace in the fact that they bagged two tricky Pokemon. And I find this story just to be quite sad. Um, video games are awesome and amazing, but they shouldn't take precedence over doing your work. They shouldn't take precedence over um, doing the things that, that you um, have agreed to do, like raise children. Uh, video games should be put ahead of that. So when you look at this situation where officers were being called for backup at a robbery that potentially could have endangered other officers' lives if it ended up being an armed robbery, it's one of those situations where you could have literally got some of your colleagues killed because you failed to respond and instead wanted to play Pokemon Go. I understand the argument over private conversations and all that, but any judge that see this is going to be so pissed that this even happened that they're just going to throw this case out. And originally back in 2017, these officers tried to argue they weren't playing Pokemon Go. They were talking about the game, but they weren't actively playing it, not really giving a fair excuse to why you had that conversation but couldn't respond to an urgent call. Again, the response was, it was too loud to hear, but if the comms can clearly record you talking about Pokemon Go, then chances are your entire argument that it was too loud is likely false. You just blatantly ignored it and decided that it was more important to go catch Pokemon. Um, kind of a sad thing and uh obviously police officers are already suffering with reputation issues this isn't gonna help especially in la our next story we got the media create sales in for the december 27th through january 2nd and i just wanted to kind of go over quickly the sales chart first off the top 10 uh software sales in japan for that week are mario party superstars at number one moving 97,163 units for a total of 725,000. Uh, we have pokemon brilliant diamond and shining pearl at number two moving 80,857 units uh with, with now that that one basically moving 2.4 million at this point. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe uh, at number three at 51,526. That, that has moved 4.3 million. Uh, Momotaro, Dentaro, Showa, Hesse, Rawa, No, Taiban. I know I always butcher that one every time. Uh, that's at number four at 43,000. It's moved over 2.5 million. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's at number five, moving 38,626. That is at 4.6 million. Uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons is at number six, moving 34,195. That has now moved 7,116,000 units. Minecraft for Nintendo Switch is at number 7 at 28,836, moving 2.4 million units. Um, Ring Fit Adventure at 24,809 sales, now moving over 3 million units in Japan. Uh, Big Brain Academy, Brain vs. Brain, um, is on there at number 9, although I don't have any exact data in there for that. Same for Pokemon Sword and Shield at number 10. Next up, we have the hardware, and Nintendo Switch, of course, dominated 195,926 units. This is a small drop-off from the week prior, which was 198,000. 
PlayStation 5 moved 46,677 units, which was a nice bump over the prior week that moved 25,000. Xbox Series saw a drop from 1,636 units the week prior down to 523. Uh, Nintendo 3DS moved 320 units, which of course that's just clearing out any inventory. PlayStation 4 moved 24. So yeah, those sales are obviously incredible. Nintendo continues to dominate Japan. I think that that's the prevailing story here is I don't need to spend a lot of time talking about this. This is just what we expect. There wasn't some major new game to come out for us to be like, oh man, let's see how well this did in Japan. It's just Nintendo dominates and owns Japan. Although kudos to PlayStation 5 for having a little bit of availability this week. And our last story was actually just announced. Uh, this is the Ezio Collection. Uh, so this has been long rumored. This is one of those rumors that we kind of forgot about, but yeah, the Ezio Collection is coming to Nintendo Switch this February. Um, the Ezio Collection includes Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Assassin's Creed Revelations, Assassin's Creed Lineage, and Assassin's Creed Embers, all in a single package. It's going to cost $39.99. There will be a physical version, sort of. Um, it's only going to have Assassin's Creed 2 on the cart. You're going to have to uh, download the rest, so... It's one of those. I, I wish that didn't happen, but that's the way it is. And it does launch on February 17th. I think it's a pretty fair price. I'm just glad to see that this is finally confirmed. Again, long been rumored uh, finally here. Let's hope some of the other long rumored games like Donkey Kong and others end up getting announced here at some point as well. And I think that's going to wrap it up for the news today. That's five big stories for you guys. I think just looking back at the day and news, it, 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 this is one of the first days we legitimately had some really nice stories, I think, in 2021. Everything from some new information on Kirby down to some wish listing from Phil Spencer and obviously the, the police officers. And, you know, it, I honestly think that we are starting to finally get ramped up as we head into this year, into 2022. Uh, it's been a very slow start when it comes to the news. So the fact that I even had, you know, what, five stories, six stories, five stories um, that were worth talking about is just awesome. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you entered those giveaways. And you know what, folks? Be sure to tune into our live stream tonight. We are going to be playing Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. Trying to get badge number seven and eight. We'll see what happens. Uh, we're going to try to get that done tonight, start, starting at 8 p.m. Central Time. Hopefully, I catch you all there.